Hello everyone, I'm Dan from Ari Dan Sewing. Uh, quick vlog for today. I don't know when the last time we vlogged was, but last time it was me and the wife, but now it's just me because she has a headache. Um, so, updates. It's deliverables time. A bunch of our orders are uh, due. And uh, just about ready. Everything is just about ready to be shipped out. Um, so now I get the uh, fun, <laughs> I get the fun task of requesting all of the shipping uh, costs from the customers. Now I try to be as honest and open as I can about shipping costs. Uh, I always give the caveat that every shipping cost uh, that uh, I quote is just an estimate um, you know but I um, I'm always honest I say look if you get a sample if you get just a one or two pieces or whatever it's gonna be expensive for you and shipping goes down the more you order the less it costs you know, but at the same time, there is still like a cap, like a minimum um, that shipping costs, and, and I don't know if we personally have reached that minimum yet. Um, we haven't had any really massive orders, so we have not uh, fully dove into the the sea, <laughs> into the sea of uh, freight, sea freight. So honestly, I, I don't know how low the price goes. I, it's just an estimate um, based on what I've read, but I have not gotten actual quotes from any companies. And I guess I should do that. You know, call up some uh, shipping and freight companies and, and see what it'll actually cost. But when I, when I don't know, I hate just like I hate window shopping. That's like pet peeve of mine. I hate window shopping. If I'm going to the store, I want to buy something. I don't want to just look. It's, for me personally, I feel like it's a, a waste of time. I'm not being productive. I hate it just mentally. So if I call somewhere and I'm like, oh, how much does it cost to ship one kilogram? I mean, like, potentially that phone call can be an infinite length. It could just go on forever. How about 1.2? Do you round up, or what about three kilograms? Oh, what's the next tier? And da da da. da. And if I if I don't have any numbers, I mean, if I don't have an order, I'm not gonna call. I just, I can't. It's just a thing with me. Maybe I should hire a designated window shopper to just go around and look at price. <laughs> just go around and look at prices. I don't know. I think it's dumb. If you order, I I quote everyone based only on what I know. So, if there is cheaper shipping available, I'll find it. I'll find it when it's time. But um, the way I came into this is the, is the way I'm going to go out. I do what do is necessary. So, if I quote you a price, you like the price, you order our service, you're going to get your stuff simple um, and if you order a lot and I'm like well this price is almost unreasonable I wouldn't pay it so I don't expect them to pay it uh, I need to find some other options if that happens then I'll find other options um, but as of now we you know have good pricing for um, air freight and sea freight and um, no one has ordered the massive loads that would require us to uh, find new shipping partners. Why do I keep picking up this folder? I keep picking up this folder uh, because I got this, this pattern making software. It's the pattern makers we've had are just too unreliable and I totally understand pattern making is art form. It's like an art mixed with a science. You have to know how to sew. You have to know 
how to measure, standard measurements. You have to know ratios. You have to know fabrics. Pattern making is hard. And you have to be an artist. You have to have that, uh, not so much analytical, but uh, impressionistic. I don't know the word I'm looking for here. It's the type of mind that uh, artists have creative. You have to be able to see in your mind and deconstruct accurately in your mind um, a piece of clothing, a finished piece into its component pieces. Like like artists, like I'm not gonna say trained artists, but I'm like, yeah, okay. So you know, the first thing you learn is when the, the key to drawing is not to become overwhelmed with the finished piece is to break everything down into its simplest components. In essence, all drawing is is learning how to draw different size circles and squares and triangles and line them up correctly so that they all add up to the big picture, the big finished picture. That's all drawing is, and that's essentially what pattern making is. It's you know you have to be able to visualize the end result and use the most basic components, straight lines and curves and whatever, vertical line, whatever, angles. You have to use the most basic components to build the finished product. I guess like anything, just not just artistic things, you know, trades, everything. Everything works like that. So pattern making is hard and especially for us because the clothes we make are inconsistent all different. It's not like, like I, I, I'm assuming the way it works is a pattern maker works. You know, they get trained just general, and then they specialize, right? And they learn how to make patterns for one article or two or whatever. Just a specialized genre of clothing. They learn how to make patterns for all of that. So they learn all of the tricks and the shortcuts and the standard measurements and everything. Like a lingerie pattern maker just makes lingerie. They don't make business suits. They don't know how. It's completely different. Um, in Ari Dan, we make lingerie and business suits. So it's almost unfair for us to try to be like, okay, here's some lingerie. Now, also, we need these track suits. Also, we need this coat. Also, we need this business suit. Plus, we need these dresses. And all of these are new styles, brand new designers, they've never been made before, they're all unique in their own way, look at these pockets, these materials, da, da, da. nobody can do it, um, no one person can do it, and if they can, I don't have the budget yet to hire that person uh, for what they ought to be paid, so I have taken it upon myself to try to learn this trade now. I can learn anything, but it does suck. Um, it's hard. It's hard. It's, it's hard. You know, especially uh, I'm not buying any pattern making software because the end goal is not for me to become a pattern maker. It's for us to find that person or that team that can do what we need. So, in the interim, I have some free software. And the free software does not have that many tutorials. So I you know, I did one tutorial. We made a pair of panties. And luckily I have again Ari Dan has the best seamstresses, the best sewers. Just for the record, from now on I'm going to say sewer. If you're from America or you're from anywhere else in the world that uses the word seamstress. I am going to use the gender neutral term sewer. It works for everybody. It was weird for me when I first came here, but the best sewers in the world work here, and guess what they call themselves? They're sewers. Men and women sewers. So, at Ari Dan Sewing, we have sewers. We have the best ones in the world that have worked for the biggest brands. So, even though maybe my pattern is not very good or it's not perfect they can pick up the slack and that's all we need just teamwork 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 anyway 
So I don't even know if the pattern I made was very good or not. I just gave it to them and said, make it, and then they do it. Uh, that's one of the perks of, <laughs> of not speaking the same language, so I can't hear it when they complain about what I do. Um, I just drown it out. It's all Tagalog. It's all Tagalog to me, and I don't care. Um, but so, no, I, I have total faith in them. So I made my first pattern on my own. Um, I think the printer messed up because this is a lot of pages. But anyway, it's a suit. I don't even know. I'm so ignorant. I don't know anything about suits. I just know they look cool. And if I had a, my own clothing brand and I did know about suits, that my clothing brand would make suits, which I know about, but I don't. So, but. So I'm going to put this together tonight, uh, and then I'm going to say, hey, y'all, look, I made the suit pattern, get on that, make that, uh, and then they will talk into Dollar about it, and again, I'll just sip some tea or something, because I don't understand, um, but yeah, so right now, a bunch of uh, projects are coming up on their delivery dates. We are in the final stretch on like every like everything. It's kind of weird. Like everything just kind of you know, we got head caps, and bathing suits, and more bathing suits, t-shirts, tracksuits, workout suits, jackets, regular suits. <laughs> we got everything. And it's all kind of come and do, um, come and do at around the same time. So it's weird how that worked out because all the jobs staggered when they came in but um, I, don't know. I don't know how it works it just works like that so if you're watching this and you're like getting like hmm, it's been a little bit of time where's my order at it's coming we're almost done we're almost done with everything it's weird almost done with everything we just cut like a whole shift of workers out but things are still getting made so we're okay um, oh, also good news, we got our um, BIR registration done today. We are officially eligible to take on government contracts, bid on government contracts, and I registered and did that today as well. So, um, now we are fully licensed tax paying Filipino official company and hopefully soon we will be um, working with the government uh, so that's exciting that's exciting um, because as much as I love being a part of uh, trying to help these new brands these people with their dreams turn them into reality and grow into something special um, it's hard. <laughs> it's hard because you need niggas be nickel and diamond. If you if you know what I'm saying, everybody wants to just get like one sample, and it's like, come on, man. It's like I'm trying to think. It's the way the way I feel about it is that. Oh wait, let me stop. Stop with this issue uh, my first public apology even though I'm not really sorry in my last video I was talking about night shift workers because I fired uh, over night shift and I was talking I was called, talking fast and loose about night shift workers because I am a career long night shift worker in many different careers different jobs All right, I've always worked a night shift and I work with night shift people. I know how they are. So whatever I was saying last time that was seen negative, um, it was only negative because in the context of I fired my whole night shift. This is the negative qualities that night shift has. It wasn't to say that night shift 
only has negative qualities. I'm not. I wasn't saying that. I wasn't saying that. Night shift. I, I think I said. You know, my mother. Called, my mother. She's a night shift worker too. She's. She was like, oh, I was sharing the video and I had to like erase it, take it down immediately because you said night shift is lazy. <sighs> okay. So that's not entire. That's not the full story. Night shift is not lazy. Um, night shift is lazy on night shift. Right, and you can fight me on that if you want to, but the reason we work night shift is because we don't have to work as hard. But the reason we pick night shift, night shift people again, highly independent, self starters, right? Self starters who start a little late, <laughs> start a little late. Um, but usually, the reason we get on night shift. The, people like me and my mother and everyone else who finds the night shift and likes it is because during the day our self-startingness uh, has us involved in some real stuff right everybody on night shift not I'm not gonna say everybody but for the most part one of the key um, one of the key components of a night shift worker is that during the day they're busy. Night shift workers use their days, right? Night shift workers are chronically, um, chronically, what am I trying to say? For underslept. Oh gosh, it's night right now. <laughs> it's night right now. And I worked all night last night, and I had to get up and do work during the day, and I'm working time. Night shift. Night shift people are, for the most part, ambitious right highly responsible uh, again self starters have like a leadership qualities they take charge and they get things done that's why they are comfortable working night shift because they again they don't need anyone to watch them or tell them what to do you know they're usually too busy to sit around and socialize all the time the way day shift, you know, they don't have, uh, night shift people don't like the bullshit, right? I hate the bullshit. You know, shooting the shit, that's part of bullshit for me. So, night shift people, they come in, they like to come in, do their job, and get out. They work, they, they do their work to earn their pay. Because in the morning, they got other stuff to do. So, I'm not saying night shift people are bad. Just saying that I had to fire my night shift team because of the bad qualities that night shift people have, or the, some of the qualities that night shift people have are not conducive to what we at Ari Dan do. Um, and, and that's not to say that they, they won't be, we won't need a night shift. Honestly, the reason the night shift I had to fire them all is my fault. I 100%. I'm not gonna say 100% my fault, but for the most part, it's my fault. In order to have an effective night shift, you need to have set 100% clear set processes, operations, um, and agendas. Right? The can. There's no room for gray area on the night shift because there's nobody watching them. The night shift needs to know what they got to do because they're the type of people that get it done and then they stop. They do what they got to do and then they stop doing it. The, the night shift is not for above and beyond. That's not what that's for. Night shift is for here is the list, knock it out, then go home, get whatever little bit of sleep you can, and then go to school or go to your second job or work on your business or whatever it is you do during the day that makes you such a cool person that you are responsible enough to work on the night shift so the reason the night shift, our night shift failed is because I as a business owner failed them uh, so I, you know, I don't hold any grudges against them you know they did fuck up <laughs> I'm not going to lie, they just fucked up a bunch of clothes, um, which is not indicative of normal, my experience with night shift, this is, I don't know what happened here, I'm not, I'm not going to lie, and I'm not trying to be ageist or anything, we just 
had an older gentleman doing the work. I don't know his full situation, if he was working during the day or what. I just know he was he was old and he fucked up. And he fucked up a lot. And I don't understand how. Uh, how the rest of the night shift allowed him to fuck up this much because anyway anyway you have to have clear set standards right so what happened was the guy he was he was a cutter so he was cutting out the pieces now we I trusted him we he kind of presented himself as an expert in cutting pants in making pants so we trusted him to make these pants but he was not an expert in making pants clearly because he made baby pants with adult legs and I don't know why and he made a whole bunch of them I mean, the dude, the dude he made a pair of pants for me but he went, took my measurements Took, did the whole, you know, measuring tape tailor thing, and he made me a good pair of pants. But when I left him to do the pair of pants on his own, and I'm pretty sure he had the measurements he needed. Well, no, here's what happened. I think this, I'm not even sure, I'm honestly I'm not entirely clear about the circumstances. The job came with measurements now as I tell everyone I work with and I'll tell you right now if you're watching this every job the measurements that they give us is wrong because we work with new brands and people who are not expert seamstresses if they were expert seamstresses they would sew their own clothes that's why they come to us because we're experts so they give us measurements that they you know either find off the internet or guess at and then we fix them um, and I trusted this guy to take the measurements he was given and make them right. It's not on night shift. I mean, no, I mean, they night shift should be able to do that. If you give someone that task, they should be able to do that. But for whatever reason, he didn't. So I had to let him go besides the fact that he didn't show up. Um, whatever happened with the whole night shift, you know, the whole night shift didn't show up one night. No call, no show. Uh, everyone, it was everyone's second chances and I just let them all go but uh, it may have been his first chance I don't think it was his first chance I, it might have been his second chance too but for what, whatever it was you know, he didn't have any bad will built up but when I come to, to work at night and there's no one there and then I'm looking like well what the fuck where's everybody and I pick up a pair of pants and you can fit one hand through the waist, but the legs are the length of my house, six feet long. We got a problem uh, that's worse than a no call, no show. That's, you know. So anyway, I apologize about saying Night Shift is lazy. Night Shift is not lazy. Night Shift is just efficient and should be in, your, in the best situation exacting uh, so that they accomplish their tasks and then they stop because they my shift is working just to work they're not working for fun um, because they got other things going on for fun that being said damn that was only supposed to be a very short I'm sorry about what I said about night shift jump back over to what I was talking about I don't remember what I was talking about what was I about to say I guess I could stop rewind this video watch it again then pick the recording back up splicing together like editing
I'm not going to edit that out. I'm just going to end the video here because I don't know what else it was. I was talking about how we were um, fully licensed, legal, and going to get government contracts and, uh, you know, each individual job. Oh, I was saying, I was saying that people only get samples from us, but people don't know any, it's, you don't know anything about manufacturing or, or manufacturers when you get into this business. Like every new person, new group, new team, new brand that wants to get their first clothes, uh, first product line made, it's not like they're like, ooh, uh, happy red clothing out of Shenzhen, China. I've heard a lot about them. No. You don't know, no normal person knows a single manufacturer or a single thing about the manufacturing process when they get started. Now, if they look some stuff up, maybe that's fine. But I'm in this business. I look stuff up. I, there may be some big names in the manufacturing world, and I'm just not big enough to know them. You know, some trade show type stuff, some you know, worldwide networking stuff, but. For the most part, you're going to go to Alibaba, you're going to see an, a list of an infinite number of clothes and people who make clothes, and you're just going to randomly pick based on price. You have no idea about the past, present, future, history, or any person, object, or thing that goes on with this endeavor that you're trying to undertake. So when, when you go to someone... Now, all you know is, I've heard I should get samples first. And yes, you should get samples, but you get samples from a Chinese manufacturer that you can't see, right? You get samples from to, to some shadowy thing that you know nothing about. If you find a manufacturer where you can see the nigga that owns it and talk to him, um, you speak the same language, you come from the same place for the most part. I mean, all their work is on social media and they post to YouTube and Facebook and Instagram every day, right? And I'm like, follow us, for real. Good. Interact, whatever. Look at what we do. See me. Here is my name. Then, then, the, what you're doing when you order a sample and I'll tell you samples are expensive shipping a sample is expensive you are 100% wasting your money you know who I am get the whole order we'll see we'll give you a free sample we'll make you the first the first piece of your order we'll use it as a sample we can ship it to you and, spend, and do the whole sample process we just pause we just Pause. You look at the stuff, you get it, you open up your package, you say, Oh, this is so great. Look at that stitching, look at that print. Da -da 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 -da. Oh, I want to change this. Oh, I want to make the length on the left sleeve, just a little bit, whatever. You do your comments, critiques, send your notes back. We roll them into the rest of the production. Pick right back up where we left off. Get your order done. Ship and in your hands quickly. We're a process that normally takes months. We can knock it down to days, weeks, depending on your production size. Because it's what we do, and we don't want to waste your time or your money. I don't want to waste your time or your money. I don't want to waste our time and money. Um, and honestly, like the the problem, the main problem with samples is they take time. Uh, and the time that they take is taken away. <laughs> the time that the samples take is taken away from the time of the, 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 taken away from the time of other customers, right? So, I get two samples. The sample making process takes the same amount of time for both of those customers. We only have a few. <laughs> again, we don't have a night shift anymore. We only have a couple employees. So now we're running out of time to make these little orders. Whereas if you give us a big order, we can we can do the we can get the big order 
at least started um, and into production in the same amount of time that it takes to make a single piece right it seems counterintuitive but once we get the pattern for the single piece uh, we can we make that single piece get the process to set, send it to you pause production take on another single piece the people who make the single piece and the people who make the production are different people but they can't do they don't do each other's jobs so while we're waiting on a single piece production sitting so I don't know it's hard to explain but if you go into a new restaurant you don't say let me taste one french fry you know I don't want to you don't want to sample a french fry you buy your pack of french fries and if you like the french fry french fries then you buy some more you keep going back right now I understand that clothing is a much bigger investment than um, french fries but what I'm saying is if you buy a french fry if you buy a, a, ba a pack of french fries you can taste the first fry and then if you don't like it give me back the whole pack and you know get a refund that we do do that um, so I don't know I'm a man you're a person a man or a woman or, or something else and um, for both people it's easy to see eye to eye just talk come up with a plan and execute it that's what we do uh, so but that's I say all of that to say that so many people keep uh, these little orders little samples and we're nickel and diamond and it's not good it's not good it, it gets us through but it's like I don't want to nickel and dime we got if I wanted to sell a single shirt I would open up a shirt store right that's what I would I would sell shirts to the public if I wanted to just sell one shirt to one person no we're a manufacturer we want to sell 10,000 shirts to one person so that they can sell the shirts single you know and they make a lot of money we make a little bit that's the that's the trade-off we charge a little bit so that we do a lot of work and just make a little bit of money uh, you do a lot of work and you make a lot of money but I don't want to do a lot of work and make a lot of money that's not the goal that's not what manufacturing is about um, so um, I said all of that to say we are going into the government game we're trying to get those big contracts now of course we're still going to offer our services to um, new brands single people you know trying to start and uh, build their dreams of course I love that it's it's very fulfilling personally for me to be a part of that process um, but at the same time it's hard and then like I'm trying I, I don't I don't know I, and I'm not trying to sound um, negative or, or, or like like I'm in despair everything's fine I just trying to figure out a way for us to get a reputation or some sort of uh, outreach or presence or presentation that would foster trust with a new client so that they would purchase the full service package, the full pack, their full order, and we give them the free sample and da da da, da and all the rest of it. Because we offer a bunch of great, you know, a bunch of great uh, service. You know, we do the pattern making, we do the size page, we design, you know, we can do design from a simple napkin sketch and come up with something beautiful. We have done it time and time again taking some something shitty some shitty picture and turning it into something good something beautiful real something you can wear right so you do it over and over and over so, but the problem is with manufacturing is always in the background every new customer is a hundred percent new 
that doesn't know anything about the game. Uh, so I have to find a way either to reach out to bigger companies who already have a production, uh, and that means competition anyway. Just like government, just just like uh, bidding for government contracts, I have to bid for these big companies. So I'm not going to say the only way, because maybe being as open and social and you know free on social media, our presence, if we can keep it growing, maybe that will be like a new paradigm in the man in the manufacturing space, and, and and new brands, new people, new customers won't be coming in um, completely skeptical with no information and tight fisted. Maybe they'll be like, oh. That's the McDonald's of manufacturing. I already know what they offer. I already know what it takes, how they work, because I've seen it online or I've seen it in advertisements. Um, but it, it, there's no market for advertising a man for a clothing garment manufacturing company on TV. You don't. It just doesn't happen. Maybe like late night or some specific. I don't know. I don't. You know, Barbley Stevens factory. You know, and the, you, you don't see that commercial on TV of just some conveyor belt. So I don't see that commercial on TV or on the internet anywhere. And um, all I do is look at garment things. So that, I don't know if that's the way that this works, uh, and if the model that they have right now is the end game. I think it has to evolve um, maybe the or maybe I'm just not tapped into the right entrepreneurial garment fashion entrepreneurial spaces um, and I know this is probably this is like boring talk now. Um, this is just me talking off the top brainstorming uh, maybe there, maybe there are some spaces like some hubs, but again, entrepreneurs are highly independent. Um, you know, how many fashion brands do you know that started their story as one guy or two guys or gals? Um, just their best, best buds. They work very really well together. They both have a similar dream, and, and but you never hear about a group. Of 20 people who all had the same fashion dream, right? It's always little cells or tiny clusters. Everyone's separate, then they build their brand up. They all have to venture in uh, timidly or whatever to the manufacturing space on their on their own. You know, it's like a secret club. You, you, if you watch anything about. Um, brands or clothing brands the main thing they say is well, I don't tell nobody about who makes my clothes are you crazy share the name of a good manufacturer fuck no They're, nobody does it they hate to do it there's I, I could not I don't even see a way for a manufacturer to become big name because the if you make good clothes niggas not gonna tell nobody they're gonna keep it a secret <laughs> they're gonna keep it a secret so and so you, especially, so we as a small manufacturer are kind of making the same bet that every new brand is making on us. We make the same bet on the new brand that the new brand is making on us because unless we bag a big fish that's already big, every new brand we have to tether our hopes and dreams. Oh, I hope. That when we make their clothes, they order some more, or they sell them, or their social media is right, or they be. I hope that they blow up, and I do. I, I genuinely hope every brand we work with blows up. But it, fashion is a hard game, and it takes a lot of money. We make it as cheap as possible, um, especially if you listen to me when I tell you get the full package. Get your t-shirts for a dollar. Don't get your t-shirts for thirty dollars. That's stupid, right? Fashion is inherently expensive to get into, 
and it's a hard dream, but and it's a dream that you got to really be dedicated. Um, you can't have one little. I mean, you can have one shirt design or whatever, but you know. So the the people, especially the 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 fact that we are so open and attract so many new brands with our low price, you know, easy communication, right? You get those people who are not a hundred percent dedicated. They're like, ooh. I want to try fashion. I've always wanted to, but da, 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 whatever. But now I got the chance, and they're gonna make it easy. I'm just gonna give them this little sketch, and they're gonna charge me the same price as if I gave them a full tech pack. Da, 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 da. So we make it easy. So we, you know, they get this very cheap shirt, and then they're like, "Well, how much is shipping?" And we're like, the "Shipping is fifty dollars." They're like, "Oh, what? I thought manufacturing was supposed to be cheap." No, manufacturing is cheap. Shipping ain't. <laughs> Shipping ain't cheap. Uh, if you want to make it cheap, you got to manufacture for real. This is a game for serious people. People that's, people that's bullshitting, they shouldn't get in. And it's a, it's a hassle. Um, but there's almost no way for me to vet uh, someone. I mean, like, wow, what kind of a flip is that? They call me and say they want to make some clothes, and then I have to call them and say, well, let me interview you. Are you even will it worth it for me to make your clothes? Because, but no, we make clothes, so they say, make my clothes, and we say, okay, how many you want? Okay, you only want one, whatever. We make the one. We take the same amount of time as it takes to make one as it does to make a hundred. And we go through the process and the negotiation, the back and forth, and they say they want the changes, and, da -da 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 -da, and finally we ship them the clothes, but they spent so much money on one, they get discouraged, they, they're like, ah, one single clothes cost me a hundred something dollars, I don't, there's no way I can do a hundred, a hundred will cost you a hundred dollars too, so, um, it's not, I'm not, I feel like I'm not complaining, but maybe it sounds like I am. I'm just explaining. I'm just explaining from my point of view the realities of clothing manufacturing um, in the way we do it. But so, we have gotten fully licensed and now we can go for some government, those big government contracts. Just like we can have always been going for those bigger fish, those already established uh, brands, um, or you know, medium-sized brands that already have. And maybe we'll do that, um, but having options is just that's the way I work. I like to have a plan A, plan B, plan C, and then when all of that fails, plan B, and then when that fails hit the ground run, right? So, that's it. Um, I'm Dan from Ari Dan. Maybe next time, Ariane will uh, join me. And I hope you all like and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Um, follow, like and follow our Facebook page, facebook.com slash Ari Dan Sewing. Same thing with our Instagram. Uh, follow us on Instagram. Instagram.com slash Ari Dan Sewing. Um, I'm pretty hungry. I'm actually, I'm on a diet. First day, no sugar, no grains. Uh, so, this is a pretty good mic. It might have just caught my stomach growling because I'm hungry. Because <laughs> I'm hungry. Um, I need to go eat some peas something. Anyway, um, just follow us, watch our videos, comment on our pictures, Instagrams, uh, make sure you, if you order something, you catch our Facebook lives when we go fabric scouting for you. And if you don't order anything, subscribe, follow us on Facebook to get notified when we do go live fabric scouting. You can see the massive Massive warehouses full of fabric. Full. More fabric than you could dream of. Um, 
just giant rolls. And uh, all of the options we have to make you, you, my camera's up high, to make you the perfect uh, piece with the perfect uh, print and perfect fabric. That's it. Bye, y'all.